Hi everyone. Today uh, we're, we have uh, a webinar in regards to uh, pricing cost optimization during a crisis. Actually, it's, it's not a group about the crisis only times. Uh, from time to time, you have, you, you, need, you have to do this optimization in order to cut costs uh, of your company. It might be useful like for, for everyone uh, during different periods of your time in, in, of your company. A few words about me. So my past background uh, is mostly technical. So I was CIO of, uh, of different companies. I spent 15 years in retail, uh, the company named Spark. Latest three years, uh, I was working as a CIO in financial companies. So we've done payday, lo payday loans and uh, pawn shops in five different countries um, from different uh, brands. And now I'm working for Computera for two and a half years uh, as a product manager, uh, both product manager for both competitive data and uh, computer pricing platform. And most importantly, I'm happy father and proud father of uh, two awesome daughters. Here's a mail. Uh, you can feel free to contact me. Uh, just drop me a message if you need some clarification, you want some information. Uh, at the end of the presentation, we're going to have um, a different link so you can, uh, you can uh, ask your, your questions. So, as I already mentioned, this topic is important uh, at all times, um, just because it's, it's about money. So uh, every business uh, needs money to operate and every business uh, needs to be, needs to have like right solutions for the right cost. So we're going to cover three major areas. First one is the optimization, uh, cost optimization for competitive monitoring. Uh, secondarily, it's about the pricing automation. And finally, we'll talk about uh, pricing automation regarding uh, using neural networks. This is like the, the most sophisticated solution this world has, has have seen. So I'll try to keep it as practical as possible. Uh, so every, in every slide, in every case, uh, I'm going to cover different uh, scenarios and uh, what's the difficulty level and the impact uh, of this particular scenario. So let's start with uh, splitting competitors uh, across different product groups. What does it mean? So you can have, uh, for instance, you have some uh, product categories uh, and you have multiple competitors. And obviously you do not compete with, uh, with, every, com with every competitor in every category. So it's money-wise, uh, monitor only competitors uh, that you're competing with in particular category and skip it for, for the others. So let's say you have a, hundred, a thousand of products and 50 competitors, that, uh, that will result in 50,000 data points. Data point is, uh, is a price, basically, just one price scraped per time. And if we will optimize this list and we'll make it only 10 competitors per, per category, and we'll multiply it uh, by the number of the same 1,000 product, we'll get only 10,000 of data points. So this uh, very easy optimization might result uh, in significant uh, cost savings, just because you'll be paying for less, uh, for less data scraping. Uh, another tip uh, is uh, it's more, more sophisticated. If you have your product roles uh, identified for each SKU, but I mean, so you might have uh, your product assortment that consists of uh, different products and you don't need information with the same frequency for every product. So you might need it more frequently for KVIs, so it's key value items, and you might need it for like daily or multiple times per day. However, for the long tail products that, you, that are not that competitive led, you might need it less frequently. So in this case, uh, let's, let's say you have a 1,000 of products, uh, 10 competitors, and we have 30 days per month, and that, that will result in uh, three, 300,000 of data points per month. But if we'll split our assortment into two buckets, uh, one is KVI, and, and we'll use Pareto rule for that. So we'll use 200 KVIs. Uh, we'll monitor, that, monitor them by 10 competitors, two times, even two times per day for the 30 days. That will result in 120,000 of uh, data points. Plus, 
we will monitor uh, those 800 long tail products, uh, but we'll monitor it four times per month, like weekly, on a weekly basis. And that will result in 32,000 data points. So in total, it will be 152 data points with twice smaller amount of data points per month. So it, it will save you some, some money. But uh, on the other hand, it is more difficult exercise because it requires that your assortment should be split into those buckets and you should understand the roles of each SKU in your assortment and why they exist there. But it can bring you some, some significant savings. Third case is uh, monitoring marketplace or price comparison websites instead of direct competitor websites. So let's say uh, you have a thousand of products uh, and two competitors uh, and you want to monitor them for 30 days and you pay one cent per each scrape and that will result in uh, three thousand of let's say dollars uh, but if you will replace those competitors with just one marketplace and the price for scraping marketplace will be twice as high as for per direct competitor uh, it will result in just six hundred dollars why is that important you should understand the logic uh, of your end buyers, uh, how they come to you. So either they come on direct website or they, they're coming from different marketplaces or price comparison websites like Google Shopping or Amazon or you name it. Scraping those websites, I mean, marketplaces or price comparison websites might result in much more uh, competitive data than you will be getting from direct websites. So we have seen uh, an increase of 350 times uh, of data coverage, of uh, competitive data coverage, just monitoring one Google Shopping instead of monitoring 50 competitors. So instead of monitoring 50 competitors, we're bringing data across 16,000 of competitors just by monitoring Google Shopping. So this is a very powerful tip. Uh, and it might result uh, in, in just significant uh, savings for your company. Uh, the other technique uh, of uh, saving money for, for competitive monitoring is identifying who are your true competitors. So what I mean by that, so there are techniques that uh, are able to identify who are your competitors that apply pressure on your sales, and that will result in, into not just reducing the number of competitors you need to monitor, but also an additional margin increase. But this exercise is usually pretty difficult for, uh, for our clients because it requires a lot of data and a lot of science uh, involved there. Um, but if, uh, if your provider can do this, uh, it can also result in some savings just because you, can, you, will, you will throw away some of your competitors to your, that are not applying pressure to your sales and, you, and basically they don't need to be monitored at all. And finally, for the cost optimization for uh, competitive monitoring is choosing between high quality data provider versus cheap. So when, when you're choosing the data provider, you should be comparing apples to apples. Some of these uh, hidden costs might not be obvious from the first glance. So let's say you're considering purchasing data from a data provider that will charge two thousand, two thousand, let's say dollars for 10,000 10, SKUs with 90% quality. And that will usually result in, in you having um, one full dedicated employee or some capacity of your pricing or category managers uh, dedicated to quality assurance. We've seen it many times uh, when, the, when the team of category managers spending from 20 to 50% of their time for just verifying uh, the competitive, competitive data because they will rely on this data in their further pricing decisions. And if this data will not have that high quality, will not be the, of that high quality, it might result in big losses because of the poor uh, pricing decisions. To illustrate this, so if you're, you're selling an iPhone cost like 800 uh, on the market and the competitive data provider 
brought you that some sellers uh, are selling it for 300 and you have some rules in place that uh, automatically adjust your price according to that uh, competitive information that will result basically in you selling your stock very quickly but uh, most likely with negative margin with big ne negative margin and that will result in big big financial losses so in order to mitigate this quality assurance should happen but this result in uh, in raising the price of uh, TCO, which stands for total cost of ownership. This is uh, this is a term for owning something, and that usually includes not just purchasing price, but also some supporting some supporting costs. That dedicated time from category managers or some uh, full time employees checking those uh, this competitive data. On the other hand, if you'll be paying for this, for the same amount, just three thousand of dollars for ninety-eight percent of percent of quality, you can stick to occasional quality assurance. You can skip the day-to-day -day, uh, quality insuring process from your category managers that should be doing uh, just other creative creative uh, work, not by just uh, doing this monkey job of uh, verifying the competitive data and you'll be able to rely on this high quality data to make your uh, best possible pricing decisions. And the total cost of ownership will be less for this particular scenario because you won't have those hidden costs. Our hint here is just evaluate what kind of uh, quality assurance you need with, uh, with your data provider and evaluate if you're ready to pay for this extra quality. Okay, so we have covered uh, competitive data, so let's move to the uh, pricing automation. So pricing automation mostly is demanded for the, by clients who are managing some big assortment of the product of the products. Because if you are, if for, for instance, if you have just a thousand of SKU in one pricing zone, that will result uh, in just a thousand of prices that you need to manage. However, if you'll be managing a 10,000 of SKU across two pricing zones, then this number will be 20,000 of prices. And then if you imagine when managing 100 of thousands of SKU, five pricing zones, that will result in, in 500,000 of SKUs to be managed. And that brings us to some automation. So usually customers stick to some Excels or some some rules engines built into the into their system or, or built in in house that will automate your your pricing. So implementation of uh, pricing solution is a moderate difficulty task and can bring you a lot of uh, operational effectiveness by saving time of your uh, employees and as a side effect. It, it can also help you stay more competitive on the market. So it, it will bring you some additional turnover, but it, it's not that significant. And it also bring you some additional controllability and flexibility. So what we also identified uh, across our clients that from time to time, they're doing the, those pricing experiments, adjusting the rules, adjusting the competitive set, adjusting some parameters there. And then they spend a lot of time analyzing where those decisions led, basically. So it's really hard for the, uh, for the companies to track if those decisions led to some impact on their major business KPIs, like revenue, sales items, or, uh, or margin, because those, uh, this information is spread across different systems. And if you, if you have this information integrated into one uh, workplace, which is your pricing platform, then it should, should be able to help you with the analysis of, the, of your pricing experiments. So it just requires a few clicks to understand if those pricing experiments led to the desired uh, raise of KPIs. The difficulty of this is quite significant because it requires a lot of integration, but the impact uh, it can, do, uh, it can also be significant if you're, uh, it, it just raises with the, amount of pricing experiments 
that occur uh, simultaneously in different uh, parts of your business. So just consider uh, if you have this, this kind of problem and consider that kind of uh, saving scenario. Additionally, it's, it's wise to understand the impact uh, of your current pricing scenarios uh, on your business KPIs before applying uh, new prices to your uh, storefront. And having these forecasting possibilities can significantly reduce the errors that might happen uh, in your business and might save you a lot of, a lot of money. So just make sure that your, uh, this forecasting capabilities are working good enough for and have like high precision in, in terms of their forecasting capabilities and apply them and analyze them before applying new prices to your storefront. Just, just get this forecast uh, for each your pricing scenario uh, and then consider if you want to apply this or you want to readjust those pricing scenarios, pricing rules, or whatever uh, pricing logic you have there. And the most sophisticated algorithm that is currently available on the market is the pricing automation using neural networks, which stands for optimizing your uh, business metrics and letting artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms to calculate the best possible price for your business in a specific situation. Usually these neural network optimization engines, uh, they require you to set some metric you want to grow and some metric uh, you want to maintain, and then it will calculate the prices that will be optimal for your business, for your current market situation. So the difficulty of this uh, exercise is very high because it, it requires a lot of uh, integration and a lot of math behind it but also the impact is just enormous what we have seen from uh, the customers applying that kind of uh, optimization is they can raise two digit number uh, in their marginality or uh, or in revenue so it's a very powerful tool and consider applying the, that kind of uh, algorithms to your business yeah, and as a side effect, it also reduces the work for maintaining the rules because what we have seen from, from, from our own experience, big companies uh, applying uh, rule-based uh, engine at scale result in like hundreds of, or even thousands of rules across their business, which are really hard to maintain. And that's not optimal. And it just consumes your time for managing those rules. So applying this kind of algorithms is much more profitable for, for the other company. And finally, this is how we envision how pricing should look like for, uh, for most of the businesses. We think that some of highly visible uh, KVI products should be priced according to the competitive landscape uh, of your business because customers uh, are choosing this is mostly for uh, for internet for uh, internet sales but they are choosing uh, where the lowest price is and in order to sell to them you need to understand the lowest price in the market and uh, price accordingly your products with some premium or some discount it, it depends on your pricing strategy however for the long tail products uh, it's usually wise to apply some AI techniques, some machine learning techniques uh, that will help you earn additional revenue or boost your business KPIs uh, without much effort. Combining those approaches will result in, in sound pricing strategy and uh, the best performance of your business. So just to recap, uh, what we have run through today uh, for optimization and uh, monitoring costs split your competitor by product groups split the frequency by product roles monitor marketplace or price comparison websites instead of their competitors or reduce number of competitors by uh, adding uh, marketplace or price comparison website instead Reduce the number of competitors uh, by 
analyzing your competitive landscape and competitive pressure by doing competitive pressure analysis and evaluate paying premium or for high data quality in comparison with in-house quality assurance. For pricing automation, we definitely suggest uh, switching to the rule-based uh, automated pricing, at least, that have all different capabilities that will save you money and save your cost uh, along the way by increased manageability, increased transparency, flexibility, and it will reduce time and money you're uh, spending to analyze your pricing experiments. <clears throat> it, it can help you forecast your business KPIs before applying new prices. And finally, consider uh, using pricing automation, using neural networks, uh, and moving from rules uh, and their management uh, towards uh, optimization of business KPIs and business performance. And then consider applying hybrid pricing approach that will result in like the best possible pricing strategy for your company. So this is it for today. Uh, I hope it was helpful to you. Uh, demand maximum from your pricing provider uh, and you should be getting all of these or most of these from, from your current pricing provider. Have a nice day. Just you have, if you have any questions, uh, just uh, scan this QR code with your phone and this will result in, in creation of email uh, for our team and you'll be able to ask any questions uh, and we'll provide you clarifications on whatever uh, points you've met in this presentation. Thanks a lot. Have a nice day. Cheers.